going forward. You know, it is the beginning of a brand new era in Destiny 2. Io, Titan, and more gone. But what does this mean for the activities? Destiny has changed significantly here, and it remains to be seen what the full impact of those changes will be. Whether you're playing this season, next season, or at any point in the future, Destiny is about to change majorly. Stuff like expansions or, you know, stuff like secrets, you know, that we're building for seasons. My approach is generally like, let's just be quiet and not say a whole lot about it. Major expansions need to innovate and push us forward not just add to the pot. What's going on with Destiny? Why haven't gotten everything right? Out of the frustrations and drama on Twitter. What's going on with Destiny? state alienates new players. Currently failing, and unless Bungie does something. The core player base is definitely engaged with the game. We are definitely going to fail it, uh, <laughs> based on the current rate. But saying that Destiny fans are not thrilled about Destiny's current state is like saying water is wet. A lot of the systems that they used to have in place are just being stripped away and it's it's ruining the game content wise you know i don't know where we're going from here people are are not happy just as a player i don't feel like bungie gives a damn about what i say it's important to focus on what is approachable in the new era of destiny what is realistic what standards can be expected, and what can be met within reasonable game development cycles. This video is not to leave a negative impression or attack game developers. This video isn't even directly from me. This video was compiled on stream by a lot of passionate Destiny players that have seen this game over years change for better or worse. So let me be clear when I say this. Not all of these pieces of feedback are directly from me. These were compiled by a mix of players who wanted to voice their opinions and talk about the problems the game has that are fixable. I am encouraging you to hear this video out and watch it to the end even if you don't agree with everything said. If you do agree with these points though and feel that this video strikes a chord with you, I also hope you share this one around because something desperately needs to change with Destiny 2. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. I am about as open to change in Destiny 2 as it gets. I am somebody that chooses to take the good with the bad in this game and keep playing regardless. But lately my opinion has landed on one simple premise. Bungie isn't making this game for anyone right now. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but there's so many reasons for this that I don't even know where to begin. Sunsetting. I was a big advocate that sunsetting would help the life of Destiny 2, and it can, but serious change needs to happen. The core issue lies with the timing of everything. An extension on this timeline needs to be made. Don't believe me? Take for instance the fact that raid weapons and armor from this current season, season 12, will not be brought into the Witch Queen. Yeah, I can wait until next season to have a one year rotation that carries over past the Witch Queen's launch, but this doesn't satisfy anybody. For more casual players, this means that playing the raid at all this season is pointless for next fall. For hardcore players, this means that the game is telling them to wait until the end of year 4 to grind for god rolls. This system is flawed for the reasons I have said before, and this isn't good for anyone. If you need further proof or don't believe me, just look at the level cap for weapons and armor from Season 12. These all have a cap of Season 15, the summer season right before the Witch Queen releases. Unless this is further clarified, I will have zero motivation, much like most of you, to grind weapons knowing that I will need to grind the exact same rolls to use them in future content. This also brings up a wider talk about sunsetting as a whole. Like I said, I was a fan of this system when it was first announced, simply because I was frustrated with only using the same three weapons for everything in the game for two whole years. I felt like what we were promised with sunsetting has yet to come true and things will have to wait, I'm sure, but being told that we will have weapons that will shit on everything is only a half-truth when it's not every season. 
plus weapons from a new expansion not even being able to jump to the next expansion is disheartening as hell grinding europa weapons feels pointless if those weapons will be gone in a year especially if the end game content is going for god rules what is the point for a more hardcore player if i have no motivation to grind these weapons knowing that they won't be useful for the next year to come how about players who are more casual also having no weapons again in a year and starting from scratch I think I have hammered home my point here that sunsetting needs to be extended by at least six months or maybe even a year for everything. Or if Bungie wants to keep it on this timeline, then I need some more weapons that shit on everything to justify a short shelf life. So far, all I can think of is Falling Guillotine, which came before a major expansion. Now I want you to think about this scenario. You have played the campaign. You have done the exotic quests. Maybe you farm for some armor exotic rolls, and you've done the raid with some empire hunts for some weapons. While not a bad experience at all, only two of those things will carry over, and only one of them will be important for next year. The exotics. I think I have hopefully presented this point well enough. It needs to change. Some may ask in the comments, well, why wasn't this an issue with Shadowkeep? I think this can be answered by the fact that there was a variety of content to play to keep players busy, but now we have very limited core activities to just explore. There are currently less strikes in the game than before, less crucible and gambit maps to play, and three raids. It's bare bones which will be built over time, but hey man, we're in year 7 of Destiny. This isn't necessarily a great time to have these issues. Now, it seems like Bungie is focused on trying to open up the game to new players and allow for a variety of a player base, but yet Forsaken and Shadowkeep are still $25 each with only two places to get meaningful loot that will carry over. The raid from each expansion, and I guess exotics, which you can grab off the exotic kiosk anyway. But I mean, this has to be an oversight, right? I don't normally beckon on price as an issue with games because that's all subjective, but tell me how it will feel in a year if Beyond Light is listed at $25 next year and all Europa would offer for Witch Queen content is raid weapons and exotics with only one of those carrying over permanently. If you are trying to attract new players, this ain't it chief. The theme in this video is that this isn't good for anyone. I think in hindsight, Sunsetting weapons that were a problem instead of everything might have produced better results, but within this system, we need a major time extension, or if not, we need some dumb fun busted weapons for a short time, not playing it safe with more of the same that we are used to. Let me recap these points very, very clear so that my message isn't misconstrued. Raid weapons from Season 12 will need to be reacquired in Season 13, 14, or 15, with Season 15 being your best bet because that will give you the longest timeline of using them. If you would like to infuse them or even use them in any activity for the Witch Queen except for the bare minimum first mission. We will have to see if this applies to Europa weapons, but judging how Shadowkeep weapons went down, I kind of doubt that will be the case. This also applies to Season of the Hunt weapons, rendering them useless for next fall's major expansion. Old raids like Last Wish and Garden of Salvation will need to be regrinded rolls at the end of this year, depending on when you got them. The result of all of this is that seasonal content and big expansion content will be less engaging. Yes, this system can absolutely work, and I'm a huge advocate for sunsetting existing in the game, but we need some more thought on this process. Game director Luke Smith has already come out and said something about this, comparing it to getting milk from the store and getting the latest expiration date. It's a great analogy, but I want to see some action get done, man. Recently, as I was editing this video, Bungie came up with their first swap of the year, going over how they're reintroducing loot to places like the Dreaming City and the Moon, just to keep gear relevant, and it does solve some of the $25 for each DLC criticism that I have. However, it creates another issue that we talked about before. First of all, only some of the loot is coming out, not all of the Moon and Dreaming City weapons. So 
I don't know the reason for this, it just feels stingy. Secondly, it will create even more sunsetting drama since, yeah, you're gonna have to grind this loot again with a year timer on it, so have fun waiting until the end of the year to grab it. I don't even know what to say anymore, man. I would like to also address people that say that sunsetting is never going to be good for the game and just remove it completely. I think it's wrong to say this, especially when Bungie has done this right in the past. They just want to try something new with it. Sunsetting in Destiny 1 arguably was much harsher too, deleting problematic exotics for the future of the game too. However, back then sunsetting gave us new weapons every single expansion, so once something was sunset, it didn't mean that you were just going to get the same thing again. You got a brand new weapon in its place. If this point does or doesn't make sense, you guys can always ask me questions on my Twitch, or you guys can come talk to me on Twitter, Discord, wherever you want to go with this. I'd love to talk to you guys about this one. Let's sunset this topic and move on to another topic that has been bothering everyone, new and old players for a while now. Loot Incentive Loot Incentive kind of goes with the theme of sunsetting, but it's a bit more complex. So I'll give an example of Bungie doing loot incentive properly and amazing to justify where it can spread to the whole game. The Deepstone Crypt Weapons Ignoring the expiration date on these, loot incentive for the weapons is strong since they all offer role combinations and archetypes not found outside of this raid. The big steal here is the raid exclusive perks that aren't game breaking but are a great next step up in quality. This makes me want to grind the raid for perks on weapons that can't be found outside of this activity. The only other place exclusive perks can be found is in Iron Banner with two perks, and I guess Trials with Celerity, but that's been there since Destiny 1, so... Yeah, I'll still count it. Even though the perks in Iron Banner and Trials aren't that noticeable, it's a good start. What scares me though is seeing Joe Blackburn discuss how exclusive raid perks will be present on future weapons, and I think the community would be fine with that, but seriously, the window of time before that happens needs to be large and put these perks only to certain weapons and activities, thus keeping aspiration. Exclusive perks need to be the case in every core activity. Loot to chase with meaningful reason for that piece of loot. But the balancing act is making it worth a time investment too and adding these core activities for the health of the game. Recently, Joe Blackburn, again, one of Bungie's lead designers, made a post to the player base giving insight on what's to come in 2021. He goes on to talk about how Palindrome, The Swarm, and Shadow Price will all be making their debuts and strikes next season with Grandmasters offering an adept mod for them. This sounds great on surface level, but should be taken with a grain of salt because the incentive for players should be to get the god roll. But will palindrome offer a new exclusive perk will it feel unique will it have a wide perk pool to give players the chase for that god roll that grasp of malik had that amago loop had that any of these weapons could have but weren't so easily acquired i think it's a great start to add strike exclusives and i hope crucible core playlists and gambit core playlists get this same love but I fear that the grind for a god roll will be over within a week or two for active players and a month for all players. I think the goal of this game, since it's listed and spoken about as an action MMO by Luke Smith, should be to allow everyone to get the weapons with a commitment to always having that perfect roll for players who put in the time to get lucky. Value the time that committed players have to this game while still giving reason for players who don't have as much time to log in. Maybe the weapons should be a rare drop with a wide perk pool and exclusive perks to keep it exciting. If not exclusive perks, give it a cool intrinsic scope, or make it themed to look really cool. Those are the weapons we all remember. Guys, Destiny 1 actually did do a lot of things right, and Destiny 2 has improved on a lot of those things. But one thing that I felt like even now that Destiny 1 still has over Destiny 2 was memorable loot. All of these guns you remember. You remember Grass of Malak. You remember Hong Jury, Matador 64, Party Crasher. Why do you remember those guns? One, you had to work to get them. Two, that was just how memorable loot was. That's what I remember from Destiny over everything else. I remember activities. I remember 
fun expansions, but the things that I hung on to, the things that I never got rid of, were the weapons I had to work to get and weapons that paid off for me greatly when I obtained the God Roll of Armor. This loot incentive discussion, I think, was best done in the season of the Forge or Black Armory. Was doing forges fun? Nah, it got old after a while. But the loot systems understood what players were hungry for. A focused grind with god rolls to be acquired, masterwork rolls, weekly rotating places to grind specific weapons until an event, <clears throat> Niobe Labs, unlocked the big picture grind, and exotics that were RNG associated on top of an exotic quest which was fairly straightforward. This loop allowed for us to care and allowed for aspiration. One forge at a time was not too great, but the content around the rest of the game to keep players occupied at the time allowed for this decision to work. This isn't unfeasible either. Season of the Hunt dropped with the same amount of core weapons to grind that Black Armory did. You don't need a raid every season to keep players happy, just a loot incentive worthy of their time. Casual players can get the weapons, and more dedicated players can get the rules for those weapons. Let's recap this section so nobody gets my message misconstrued again. I want to make sure that, hey, maybe you're not fully following along, but you're with me for this part. Okay, what I believe the community wants from Loot Incentive is something that is rare to drop from certain activities, exclusive perks of those activities, not being afraid to take risks, making memorable loot, whether it be the scopes, the aesthetic of the weapon, the feel of the gun. Those are the things that I think people remember the most about the loot that they use. I also believe that weapons need a wide perk pool to keep people interested. Maybe there's something that you can acquire, whether it be Outlaw and Dragonfly on that hand cannon, but you may not get it for a long, long time, and that's okay. Players can still get the weapon, and the people who want to take the time to make the most out of it can spend that time. It's good for everybody. I think right now, Bungie doesn't want to take risks in making memorable loot. And part of my brain wonders if this has to do with what we talked about before. If stuff is being sunset, then what is the need to make amazing memorable loot all the time? If it's not going to be here longer than a year, in Bungie's eyes, maybe, and this is a harsh assumption, so take this with a grain of salt, but... What's the point of going all in on making something super memorable if it's gone before people can fully, fully get attached? Just food for thought. My next topic I think will hopefully answer the content question. The key for loot incentive is to also make challenging content. Challenging content doesn't have to be for everything in the game, but there should be options. Now, the main argument that players typically make for the reasoning that most players couldn't beat challenging content is, well, nobody can throw the ball in the Corrupted Strike properly, so how can you expect them to beat a raid? In an activity like a Basic Strike, that doesn't land on the players, that lands on Bungie. How about not allowing a shield to even be hurt if you throw an uncharged ball in this strike? How about text with an image showing someone throwing a ball to a teammate to charge it? These UI directions go a long way to help players progress and have that aha moment. I don't think the Destiny player base is stupid. I don't think people are incapable. I used to go into LFG groups all the time with some very capable players that just needed some direction. But I feel like the game isn't challenging its player base and thinks of them as stupid in most activities. I ran the New Light missions and not only did I feel like I was being treated like I was incapable of doing anything, but I was quite literally punished for moving a bit faster than the game wanted me to go. Get to the array. Alright, I'm in here. It told me to go in here. And I'm stuck. To the point where I had to reload the mission because I was stuck in a doorway and no, Step Bro did not get me out of this door. This wouldn't be a problem since the New Light experience isn't for me, but the UI, the dialogue, and mission structure still doesn't do enough to train new players either. Before the New Light experience was updated, it was one mission and then just jump into the large world of Destiny. Now, it's a quest and there's the same issues before again where players have no clear direction, but this time just after the quest is completed. 
I don't want to stay on the new light train for long, so I'll be hopping off of that and just say that challenge is even weirder when we are encouraged to use mods like Charge with Light and War Mind Cells, yet they are not even necessary for any activity in the game except Grandmaster Nightfalls and Day 1 Raids. Both of which pit players at least 20 levels under with Grandmasters having only negative modifiers and kinda bullshit one-shot mechanics. Bungie must start treating the game like it's on year 7 for some of its activities. Lean in on becoming the action MMO and not half-bake these so nobody is happy. New players don't understand what is the direction and consistent players don't have a reason to use their builds. When I don't care about the loot, nor the methods in which I earn it, what is there to do? I don't really have a place to go in the game to truly test out my power, my builds, my anything really, mostly my patience. I'm as powerful as I'm ever going to get in the game and every season is just me getting back up to that point. Again, to do what exactly? Where are my goals? I build up all of this crazy armor, the stat rolls and mod selections, and I stomp everything into the ground, or in the case of GM Nightfall, run with the same defensive perks that I always have, because trying to actually use any sort of an offensive build, most of the time, not the best idea. Destiny is a casual experience. I get it. But man, I need something to sink into. Are casual players just happy with an endless leveling staircase? I think I would be if it felt like the progression mattered, but it just doesn't feel like it does. Hey guys, me again, guy who keeps saying I'm going to recap each section so nobody takes me out of context. The issue with challenging content isn't that something like New Light exists. I actually think it's great to give new players the opportunity to learn the game. It's the execution of it where players are left just as confused when they leave the New Light quest. There's no clear direction in the game, no start to finish path, and the reason that exists is because well, there's just not a lot of challenging content. I don't want to knock anybody who thinks that Grandmasters are very hard, because I think they are too, but I think they rely heavily on artificial difficulty. I've made a whole video on challenging content before, and I made some somewhat harsh assumptions in that video, which definitely could have been taken, of course, out of context. I really do think that players are capable of challenge, but I think the game needs to start testing them, make us use our builds and things other than day one raids. Because at this point to a player like myself, and honestly I would say a decent amount of players, the only way to give us a true challenge anymore is Grandmaster Nightfalls with one shot mechanics, Day 1 raids for placement, not even completion anymore, under leveling ourselves in raids even further, and players running low man raids. Look, I get that the challenging content aspect isn't for everybody, but I think games need options, man. Loot incentive exists due to challenge. Challenge exists due to loot incentive. They both work hand in hand, and both of them right now need to be better. I have spoken a lot here, so let me go over the topics we've discussed again. Sun settings execution the search for loot incentive, and meaningful difficulty with options, while not making the player base feel stupid. Now, with that being said, we need to talk about something that has all three of these issues in one place. Seasonal content. I propose a partnership. Break. Zivorat's hold over my shore, and you can claim any prize in my lair as your reward. You'll have earned it. It's done. Wow. Like we're making progress. We are. One step at a time. and half a clip of a Nyclos SMG. I'd like that. Me too. Cool. Check the rolls. Disruption break and season of the hunt, while not over, has all three of these issues amplified. It starts with something that at this point in Destiny I think should go away, but will probably not. Drip feed. 
If you watched my most recent raid video, I discussed the drip feed model as a concept, but I will repeat it again for this one. The concept is that there is something almost every week of the season. The premise sounds great, something for players to chase every week, but in execution, this normally falls flat. We discussed Black Armory before with a new forge every week until the third forge rotated back again. This was about the peak of this model since it introduced new weapons to grind per week, but even then, it limited the game because it told players to wait, and not only does it create FOMO, the fear of missing out, but it tells your player base to not really get hyped for seasonal content. Oh, what's new in Destiny this week, Evan? Well, there's Tier 1 Reckoning. Oh, that's cool. Any grind to it? Yeah, in two weeks we get Tier 2, which actually has stuff to do. Oh, so I guess I'll just play an hour, then wait until next week. Yep. That scenario is actually at this point something desirable because of how far we have fallen in drip feed content. Some will say, well, Evan, there was four months of nothing in the Taken King, and you said you don't want that again. This system gives us new stuff every week. And to that, I simply say, well, yeah, but it's super artificial and is more trouble than it's worth. This is sort of a side note, but I feel like I have to comment on this since I graduated college for creative writing for TV and cinema, and hey, I actually used my degree to sit in my room, so... Yay. <laughs> Drip feed is actively hurting the story Bungie wants to tell. How am I supposed to feel connected to characters like Crow if I only get a small chunk of story every week? How am I supposed to care about the story if it will take 90 days to make a small leap of progression? Just doesn't make sense to me personally. I can forgive this stuff since I don't necessarily play Destiny for the rich storytelling and maybe this season was scrapped together with Rona in mind, but I can't excuse non-meaningful weapons with no seasonal sandbox change, and all of these weapons will retire before they can be used in the Witch Queen. I can't excuse that in a 90 day model of content that by day one in four hours of grinding, all weapon rolls have been acquired through a very easy activity. Four hours and I was done with the rolls that are meta this season on weapons that I won't really use. The lure is a cool idea, executed poorly. It forces you to grind specific activities in order to charge it for preset things to get. You want to grind for the only weapon that is worth using this season? No. You get armor only as an option, and you must complete Gambit matches to get that. This is only made worse too when the lure is actively encouraging a game focused around team and community to pursue it solo. It's random what you get to grind, and progression moves differently player to player. This only hurts more casual players since it's convoluted where to go and what to do, and if you were to ask a more dedicated player, the player would be chasing entirely different pursuits on different timelines than the casual player. The hunts are a great time, and it's fun to just shoot something and chase it, but everything gets one-shot by most weapons in the game. So it's telling new players that this seasonal and new content that you need to level up for is this easy with no meaningful weapons to grind for more dedicated players and weapons that will be useless in new content before they can see more utility for both types of players. I know the season will need to progress and there might be harder options later, but doesn't that just highlight the problem being worse? That I was done with all of the weapons in four hours and we have to wait until the end of the season for there to be a harder difficulty to have an easier time to get the weapons that I was done with in four hours. Hey there, guy who's editing this video three weeks after I recorded those lines, hoping for a harder mission. Well, we got it. And I was told to slow down while doing the mission in a game where I was given the lament and cloud strike from the major DLC. Not only were you told to slow down, but in the most recent This Week at Bungie article, I was also told to not use specific weapons when slowing down. I just don't even know anymore. I believe seasons going forward need to allow players options of difficulty for higher rewards off the bat, instead of having us wait 
week after week until eventually something is harder to do, but I already have all the rewards. I'll say it again, four hours to get all the weapons that I wanted with the rolls that I wanted, and no challenge to boot that as well. I don't think that this is a good model, and I think Season of the Hunt absolutely suffered as a result. We need to wait for the rest of the year's seasons, all of which I hope will be better than Season of the Hunt so far, but these are core issues to seasons in general, not just the Season of the Hunt, and these issues will be perpetuated longer if something isn't changed. When the dawning system of loot is better than the Season of the Hunts, we got issues, man. Seasonal content is the biggest showcase of all of these issues that are fixable in the game. I want to stress if I haven't already that these issues don't exist for one side's player base. These issues are for all portions of the player base. Players who sink a ton of time into the game haven't been a priority for a long time, which has always sucked to know, but now this is the first time I feel like nobody is a priority and we're just drifting until the next day one raid again. I'd love to do Destiny 2 if there were more things like the raids, but there's just not. That game is boring. That game is tedious chores to prep you for the upcoming raid in a year. This isn't just coming from me. This is coming from players who play the game for anywhere from 2 to 40 hours a week. These are also only the things that impact the overall game. I could talk about map variety, contest mode, grandmasters, material economy, leveling, artifact power, and a whole laundry list more, but I'll save those talks for streams or other videos depending on if people actually like this one or if I end up on the top of Reddit because somebody hates what I said. So if this video did strike a chord with you, feel free to leave it a like, man. I wanted to hammer home on these parts of Destiny today because they are seriously and desperately in need of change or players will start losing motivation to play the game that we all love faster than ever. I have no doubt things will change over time, and it is telling that Bungie knows they have a lot of work to do with a new Polygon article coming out almost every day at this point, but I encourage anyone listening, whether at Bungie or not, to take all of what has been said into consideration. I mean, you guys know me, or if you don't, hi. I'm someone who is known for generally telling the community side of all of the past stories of Destiny, and this one, to me, is the biggest community story of all. The game will fade if meaningful change isn't made, and this season of content got me thinking into variety more than any time I've ever felt in Destiny. Don't get me wrong, I still plan on making plenty of Destiny videos, but it definitely started to pique my interest, and I think I will be pursuing variety with the Destiny videos, so hopefully you guys can be a part of that journey, man. I want to also stress that all of these models can exist in the game today, but the execution needs to be vastly improved in the ways that we went over. Sunsetting either needs to be extended, allow for immunity for certain weapons, or must provide some broken fun weapons to use for a window of time. Meaningful and rare loot must be added to core activities with a wide perk pool and exclusive reason to use that weapon over others. Content needs to challenge players and provide options on the higher end with meaningful rewards. Seasonal content needs to provide reasons for players to play and may need to find new ways to reinvent the drip feed model. With all that being said, we must have change.